You've got a good audio level on your mic, but you want to sweeten up the tonality a bit to give it an extra edge. Maybe even do the same for your other audio sources. Even the best of microphones or sources need a little processing. So stick around and we're going to talk about OBS's new equalizer and some basics surrounding the function. Like any tool we use, having the fundamentals is crucial to optimizing its usage. And audio engineering is no exception. So let's review a few things. Each audio element has its own unique pitch and tonality, which stands out in differing places across the frequency spectrum. An equalizer helps to balance those tones by raising or lowering volume of specific frequencies. When an equalizer is named and includes the word band, it's referring to the number of sections in the spectrum you're able to control within the EQ itself, short for equalizer. As the bands of an EQ increase, they are usually spaced out equally across the spectrum for a more balanced control. As of OBS version 29, a three-band equalizer has been introduced. Other solutions with more features are also available, and we'll discuss those a bit later. With the OBS three-band EQ, you're able to adjust bass, mid-range, and treble, which are also named as low, mid, and high, respectively. But how much are we able to control across the spectrum with this EQ? Let's find out. For this test, I'm using a real-time analyzer program called SMART by Rational Acoustics. The bottom box shows vertical level metering for each frequency, while the box above shows level changes as variations in color of the frequency range. The brighter the color, the louder the level for those frequencies. Pink noise is being applied to the signal as it provides equal energy across the spectrum. As we start with the low side, or bass, we can see from the lowest frequency to about 200 Hz, the entire range is affected when reduced. Therefore, this band is configured as a shelf, meaning anything below the target frequency will be adjusted together. Moving on to the mid-range, or mid, it appears to be centered around 1.3 kHz and configured as a bell curve with a high bandwidth value. This amount of adjustment may be useful if your vocals are sounding hollow with some presence of sounding like you're on the phone. Finally, with the high section, it looks like another bell curve centered around 12 kHz with a range affecting as low as 5 kHz and upward past 16 kHz. This section is where the S's and the T's are for vocals. If this EQ is not enough to balance the tonality of your audio sources, alternate plugins are available. In the audio filter section of OBS for the corresponding audio source, there is an option to add VST plugins. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology and is a virtual interface to connect plugins to software, which are also available in digital audio workstations such as Reaper, Pro Tools, Adobe Audition, etc. As of this video, there are three versions of VST in operation. OBS currently supports the use of plugins under VST2. Therefore, when looking to add third-party plugins, be sure to verify the versions of VST they're compatible with. The good news is there are quite a few plugins available and are actually freeware. One website that has a 100% trust score with scamadvisor.com and also rated number one at makeuseof.com is pluginsforfree.com. That's plugins, the number four, free.com. For this video, we'll go over two types of EQs, parametric and graphic. Starting with the graphic EQ, this one has sliders to adjust each band. This can be helpful for fine adjustments on particular audio sources if only a few frequencies are causing a problem. Moving on to a parametric equalizer, it is more commonly used for all common audio sources, and each band is able to adjust parameters at the target frequency as well as neighboring frequencies above and below the target frequency. For this example, I'm demonstrating with the 2S EQ by Second Sense Audio and available at pluginsforfree.com. This EQ features seven usable bands with a frequency sweeper for each band, bandwidth control, high pass and low pass filters with adjustable slopes, and also RTA that lets you see the impact of the adjustments. 
the high pass filter is handy for filtering out frequencies below the set point, basically any bass or low end that is either not needed or problematic. The gain slash order for this particular plugin references the angle of the slope for the filter. From a value between one and eight, the greater the value, the steeper the angle. For the low pass filter, it has the same function as the high pass, just backwards. It's just cutting the higher frequencies. For the two bands, one just above the high pass filter and the other just below the low pass filter, these are actually shelves with the ability to adjust the width thereof, so that's a neat little tool to have at times. Plus, you're able to adjust the placement of the shelves. For the four other bands in the middle, again, you have the sweeper capability to place them anywhere in the spectrum that you need to. And again, also with bandwidth control, so you can adjust the bell curve and you can also adjust gain up or down. The common practice when equalizing is to reduce the problem frequencies and add what's absolutely needed. Depending on how much is reduced, there may be less overall volume afterwards. And this can be made up for with the overall gain control on the EQ itself. The position of the equalizer amongst other plugins in your signal chain for that particular source have the differing sound. I usually position my equalizer after compression on my mic. Another common position is before compression, which allows the compressor to maintain volume of the adjusted tonality afterwards. Either way is not wrong. It just comes down to what position is best to get the tonality you want. And that's the rundown for equalization. Did you find this video helpful? If so, if you could do me a big favor and just click that like button, that'll be a big help for me. Feel free to post in the comments any other tech tips you'd like to see. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, happy mixing, everyone.